everyone, I'm Kirsten with Unfinished Wood Co. And I'm so excited to teach you today how to paint this home decor farm sign that is perfect for every season of the year. We're gonna paint all of these different shapes, everything from Valentine's Day, you'll get something for Halloween, you'll get flowers for spring, and an ornament even for Christmas. So many more shapes you'll get, something fun for every month. So let's get started. So let me show you what we need to get started. So the first thing you need is your home wood sign. And then there's two uh, unique ways that you can order your shapes. So there is a basic set that you, you get something for every season, but it's a little bit more basic. A star, a pumpkin, you get a cupcake, you get a flower, you get a, an ornament, and you get a heart. And then you can also order a little bit more details and something that gets you even more into the year. You get a clover, you get a snowflake for winter, not just Christmas, you get a butterfly for spring, you get a pineapple for the summer, you get a bunny and you get a leaf. So you can order each one or you can order just one, whichever set you like the best. So to get started, I'm gonna show you the supplies that we need. So we are using Folk Art Acrylic Paint. We're using both regular acrylics, we're using multi-surface acrylics, and we're also using some chalk paint. The great thing about the Folk Art is it all works together. So use the colors and the paints that are best for your home decor. So you're also gonna need some Velcro dots. You're gonna need some stencil tape or some masking tape. Always a piece of sandpaper. Now this is a cute little technique that I'm gonna teach you guys. You need a little scrap piece of wood. It doesn't need to be this size, it doesn't need to be exactly this, but just a small little scrap piece of wood. A paper plate and some paper towels, um, some clean water, and then for brushes, I always like to say, have just a variety of brushes. You wanna have a big brush, a small brush, and a medium brush so you use what's most comfortable for you. So for today, I also want you to have an old toothbrush for splattering and one or two stencil brushes because I'm gonna show you guys how to add so much um, pattern to all your different shapes. And the other thing, so I am gonna be using a home decor stencil, which is just this cute little flower pattern, but I want you guys to have one stencil that you like whether it be floral, whether it be a background, but just a stencil pattern that you like that I can show you how to add some pattern to your, to your shapes. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we are gonna do is to prepare our home sign. And to do that, we are gonna use Folk Art Chalk Paint. This is my favorite paint. It's great for any wood surface. I'm using black. And all I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my bigger flat brush. I am gonna dip directly into that bottle and I am just gonna completely base coat my wood sign. You can see you get such good coverage. The wood by Unfinished Wood Coat is so smooth. There's no need to prep or sand. You're gonna make sure you get in all of these wood grooves. These are great because it kind of mimics um, old barn wood. So make sure you get into those grooves. Again, use whatever brush is most comfortable for you. I like to use a larger brush when I'm base coating. Usually with the Folk Art Chalk Paint, you only need one coat. That's also a reason that I love to use this paint. Now make sure you don't have any thick areas where there's too much paint buildup. You just want a nice, even, smooth coat. And then also make sure, after you get the top base coated really well, make sure you pick up your sign and you get all of these inside edges. Just move your sign around, making sure you don't miss any. But you wanna get all of those inside grooves that's one of the unique things about the surface is I love that it's dimensional like this and you can see through it, but make sure that for your project to look completed that you don't leave those unpainted. So 
So now that your, your sign is totally painted and dry, what I want to do is just run um, a medium grit sandpaper over it. It just kind of softens out the edges and brings everything together. Perfect. So now we are going to use the Folk Art Chalk Paint White. And I'm going to teach you just a great way to create a very simple, distressed, um, chippy paint look by using just this little piece of scrap wood that you have. So we're going to put a little bit of the white chalk paint onto our paper plate. You just need a little. And then using your little piece of wood, you're going to pounce into the paint and then next to the paint, removing some of that off of the wood. You want a lot of paint on there, but you don't want so much that it's clumpy and drippy. So into your paint and then off onto your paper plate. So the key to using this little block is, you wanna have a very light grip and you wanna work in the direction of your surface. You don't wanna go back and forth like you would with a, with a brush. Um, you wanna go with the edge of your surface and very light, light handed and you want to just skim across the surface. So this is loaded with the chalk paint white and I'm gonna start right here on this edge I'm gonna stay flat with my surface and I'm just gonna lightly touch down and skim across the edge of this sign. You can see how the block jumped back and forth, more paint, less paint, but it makes it look like that paint has chipped off over time. I'm gonna do the same thing with these great grooves that make it look like an old piece of barn wood. I'm gonna just lightly skim Picking up paint as you need it. Lightly skim along these grooves. There's the second groove. And I'm just gonna lightly place that on there and just skim in the direction of the cut, letting the block do all the work and apply paint very randomly so it looks weathered. I'm gonna do the very same thing in the very bottom edge of my plaque. Picking up paint as I need it, but not too much. A little bit on the other edges. And then very lightly, I am gonna go around the openings where the letters were cut. You don't wanna outline it exactly, you don't wanna mash it down, but you just wanna let that block bump up against the edges of the letters in a very random loose pattern. You can see as paint comes on and off the block, you can see that it allows more paint to be applied or less, but it be create, creates that beautiful chipped weathered look with just very little work. So now we're gonna let that dry. So now that your sign is painted, I'm gonna set that to the side. Now I wanna show you guys with just a few really basic techniques how easy it is to paint all of, of these different shapes. Those are using just the same stencil, using some splattering, which is our toothbrush. This is the same stencil as you see there. Again, some splattering, that cute little block technique. All of these shapes with just some very basic techniques. So much that you can do, quick and easy. That's using the block, that's the same stencil there, 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 even there and there. Actually, it's even on the pineapple. So don't be intimidated, there's a lot going on here, but I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to create all of this for your home decor sign. That's perfect for all year round. All right, so the first thing we are gonna do is we are gonna base coat all of our wood shapes. So I'm just gonna base coat two of our shapes just to show you how easy it is to base coat. For the ornament, I'm gonna use just regular folk art acrylic, Jamaican C, and for our heart, I'm gonna use regular folk art acrylic, apple red. These shapes are laser cut, they're so smooth, and the wood is perfect for base coating. There's no prep required at all. So I'm gonna just squirt a little bit of the red onto my paper plate. 
There we go. And a little bit of the green onto my paper plate. And using my medium brush, I'm just gonna base coat. A little tip that I like to share when painting these laser pieces is you don't need to paint the edges because the dark edges are just so beautiful. The wood is so nice, it, it paints with just one coat. There's no need to base coat, sand, or prep. So all of your shapes, you're gonna get a solid base coat color on every single one. On our ornament, again, using a medium brush and no water, I'm just gonna base coat with this beautiful light blue. Making sure not to get any drips on the edge. So once you have all your shapes base coated, you're just gonna set those to the side and let them dry. So now that your shapes are dry, I'm gonna show you some of the basic techniques that we're doing today. So on my heart, I am gonna use the flower stencil pattern that I like. And you can see it's a flower, but always look at each of these elements on here separately because there's so many patterns that you can create with this one simple stencil. So for my heart, I'm gonna use a small stencil brush. And remember, never use water when you're stenciling. You want a very dry brush. You can see on my palette, I've got some of the white and the red from base coating. I'm gonna just pick up a little bit of the white and a little bit of that red, and I'm just gonna blend that together till I get a soft pink color. Still adding no water. And once I have the color that I like, I'm gonna remove some of that paint on my paper towel. And then I am just gonna position my stencil only using this cute little flower that's the center of the stencil design. And I am gonna lightly stencil just that area. I'm gonna pick that up and move it to another section. And again, very little paint and no water. I'm gonna stencil just that little flower pattern. I'm gonna pick that up again and move it, creating a cute little pattern all over my red heart. Now, if you wanted to tape around that, that's totally fine, but you definitely don't need to if you're using a smaller stencil brush. I'm gonna move that again. Because when you stencil, you use such a little amount of paint, it almost dries instantly. So you can see as I move this stencil around, the paint that's already on there is actually already dry, so there's no need to wait. I'm just randomly repeating this cute little daisy pattern around my heart. So using this same stencil, Pick and choose different elements on there to accent all your different shapes. So I'm gonna let this little heart dry, and now I'm gonna show you another great technique. So we have got a little round spouncer. It's just a round sponge on the end of a handle. A great way to create pattern is to dip that, I'm gonna dip into the white paint, and then off so you don't have too much paint on there and then just use it like a rubber stamp, pouncing it to create the perfect polka dot. You can add more or less depending on how many dots you want, but just a fun way to create a great pattern on your wood shape. So that's another technique. Another technique that we have already done, we did it on our home sign, how we distressed the edges. So using that same little block, I'm just gonna get any of the white paint that's on it off on my paper towel, and I am gonna dip it. Here is the blue that we base coated our ornament with. I'm gonna dip that block into the light blue. Remember, you remove a little bit on the side, and then I am just gonna very lightly, again, light grip and staying flat with the surface, I'm just gonna skim that block around the edge of this base-coated snowflake. 
makes it look like weathered layers of paint and just gives a really hand-painted look to your shape. So that's another technique that we're gonna do with all of our different shapes. And the final technique to use on all your different shapes is how easy it is to paint just using tape. So on our little ornament, it's base coated and it's got the polka dots that we applied. I am gonna add tape, creating a large stripe in the center of my ornament. You could do one large stripe, you could do several different stripes, but press down that tape, making sure that it's on there really good. And using a medium flat brush, I am just gonna base coat that center stripe with the same red that I used for my heart. Making sure not to drip on the edges and just getting a good solid coat. If you need two coats, just let it dry in between coats, but usually with folk art, you don't. It's such a rich, creamy paint. You usually only need just one coat. So I'm gonna get a good even stripe in the middle of my ornament. And then very carefully, I'm just gonna remove that tape, creating that clean edge stripe. And the last technique I wanna show you, again, that you can use on all of your different shapes is simply using an old toothbrush to splatter. So when you're using the old toothbrush, you're gonna dip it in the water and get it wet. And then I am just gonna put it in that same folk art chalk paint that I used before to base coat. You wanna add just enough water to make it kind of an inky consistency. Not too thin, but not too thick. I'm gonna just tap that on a dry paper towel. You don't want paint just dripping off of there. And then you are simply, and I'm gonna do both our home sign and I'm gonna do this cute little heart to show you the technique. I am just gonna very lightly splatter that using my finger, brushing it across the bristles, and just creating a fly speck, very random. Do more or less depending on what you like, but just easy ways to make everything look hand painted. So I just wanna show you how easy it is to add all of those techniques I just taught you. So there is our snowflake, just with the block. Here is our cute little bunny, base coated, and then just using the block and the fly speck, and then a little Sharpie marker to define his nose. The clover is just a simple base coat and then using the block and the toothbrush. The cupcake is so cute. All I did was base coat it as you see and then using the toothbrush and using just a, bride, a dry brush technique to create just the smallest amount of detail. The star was done so easily using the tape that I taught you guys and then adding the block and the speckle. Here's a fun one I wanted to show you. So this is base coating with two different colors, blending it softly in the middle. And that is the same stencil that I showed you guys on the heart, just using all of the design elements. And this is a cute way to see that same stencil. Base coated a purple, and this is again, that same stencil, just using different elements and different colors. There's the heart, it went from base coated to just a few little elements and it looks hand painted. The pineapple, we just used the block, we splattered it and then this is just a little dry brush using that round spouncer. The flower went from a pink base coat and again using that same stencil and the block. And then the ornament that I showed you, I added a little touch of glitter and I used that same stencil. So just have fun with just a few simple techniques. And then here's our pumpkin. He went from a solid base coat. I used a paint marker to define his face. And then that is that same block technique that we've been using the whole time. So those simple techniques and you can create so many fun patterns on your shapes perfect for all season. Now I wanna show you guys the last little tip when you are adding your elements to your sign. 
Okay, so you guys are gonna use the Velcro dots. My best tip for using these is cut your dots apart, making sure that you've got, you've put the two ends together. And rather than putting your dots on the back of each shape individually, because what will happen when you attach that to your house or to your home sign, each dot will be on a different, a different spot on your sign and it will not hang straight. So what you wanna do, just a simple little secret, is you want to take off the back, revealing the adhesive on your first Velcro dot. And you wanna put that on the back of your basic shape. And you want to leave the other end of your Velcro on there and only remove the adhesive. Then with the adhesive exposed, you want to center that on your sign where you want that to be and you want to press down getting both dots attached to the surface. Once you've done that, you want to pull off your pumpkin, the dot is on it, and then there is a dot in the perfect position on your home sign. So now for every other shape, what you want to do is you want to put the coordinating Velcro dot onto your home sign, not onto the back of your shape. Then you want to remove the backing of the adhesive and you want to press your wooden shape, position it and center it, and press it onto the Velcro adhesive. And then you want to remove it. What it does is it puts the Velcro in the perfect place so that everything hangs perfectly. I'm gonna show you guys with one more. I'm gonna take the opposite end of the Velcro and I am gonna put that on the home sign, not on my shape. I'm gonna cut that off and I'm gonna remove the backing to expose the adhesive. And then taking my pineapple, I am gonna position that where I want it to hang on my sign press down and then remove that shape. Again, it puts the Velcro dot exactly where you want it so that it hangs straight for all the seasons throughout the entire year. For more ideas and projects, go to unfinishedwoodco.com. And if you liked today's video, please subscribe. We've got more videos to come.